Hi folks, we are going to finish up chapter two in this um, video. We finished off talking about sig figs and we started talking about prefixes and equalities. We kind of briefly ran over it, but we're going to finish up this last portion of chapter two. So where we left off, we were talking about prefixes and how prefixes can take the place of certain numbers. And um, prefixes, we can also use their um, abbreviations to represent these numbers, right? Their definition. So here we see milligrams. Milli is represented as an M. Micro is represented as a mu or MC, usually that you see in um, hospitals. So here we have a number of metric prefixes, and these all are positive and they're going to increase the size of the unit and um, the most important one to remember is going to be kilo in this group all right and notice that um, one kilometer is equal to 10 to the 3 or 1 times 10 to the 3 meters or i can say that one meter is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 3 kilometers so depending on how you want to represent this equality you can write it either way. Here we have prefixes that are going to decrease the size of a unit. And notice that these are these powers of 10 are all negative, and we have decimals for these prefixes. Deci is D, centi is C, milli is M, micro. You should know these. So you should memorize these and their definitions. And notice here we have these equalities as well. One nanometer is one times 10 to the minus nine. Now notice even though we have meters, notice that it doesn't matter. We can have grams, seconds, liters, um, prefixes are going to go in front of the unit. And each prefix has its own definition. So we can actually just replace uh, a numerical value with that prefix and we can write things simpler. So let's do these study check problems again. Um, A says 1,000 liters is equal to one something. Well, 1,000, we know, is kilo, so we're going to put that there, and it's also 10 to the 3. B, 1 times 10 to the minus 3 grams is going to be 1, what? Well, 10 to the minus 3, we know is milli, and so we're going to put an M there. And C is 0 0.01 meters is equal to 1 something. And this, ten to, this is equal to 10 to the minus 2, which is centi. So we'll put a C there. Okay? All right. So how many grams would we have in 1 centigram? Well, centi, we already know, is two is 10 to the minus 2. So we can say that 1 gram is equal to 10 to the minus 2. I'm sorry, 1 centigram is 10 to the minus 2 grams, right? Or... If you think about it, centi is a smaller unit, so I have to have many more of these units to make up the larger unit. So if I switch this around, I can say that one gram now is going to be how many centigrams? Well, it's 10 to the 2. Okay? And so that... The answer to this question is going to be what? You know what? The answer is not on here. The answer is. Oh, no, it 
Yeah. Sorry. So how many grams are in one centigram? 0 0.1. Because centigram minus 2 is 0 0.1. Okay. Moving along. So here we see a number of different equalities. Here we see numbers describing the same length, describing the same volume, and also describing different units of mass. All right? Um, so one meter is 100 centimeters, one meter is 1,000 millimeters, and one centimeter is 10 millimeters. So these can also be used as conversions. If I want to go from one centimeter to a millimeter, then I know that there are 10. If you think about a ruler, if you think about a centimeter ruler, there are 10 different little spaces in between one centimeter, right? So each of those is a millimeter. So there are 10 of those in um, a centimeter, right? And if you think of a meter stick, you have 100 of those. So 100 centimeters in a meter stick, right? And then it would be 1,000 millimeters in a meter. See? Right here. Um, and here we have some different units of mass. And notice that they're all pretty much the same. The only thing that we're changing is whether it's mass, length, or um, volume. So let's move on to um, the next study check. So which one of these units are larger? Well, milli is 10 to the minus 3, centi is 10 to the minus 2, and we know that if the exponent is higher and it's, a, well, what is it? The number is higher, but it's negative, that's going to be a smaller number. So centimeters are larger. If we have kilograms and centigrams, well, we already know centi is 10 to the minus 2, and kili is not 10 to the minus 3. It is 10 to the 3. Kilogram would be the larger unit. If I have milliliters and microliters, well, milli is 10 to the minus 3. Micro is 10 to the minus 6. So once again, just like up here, milli is going to be larger. If I have kiloliters and microliters, well, mc is the same as this up here, and 10 to the 3, then we're going to have more um, kiloliters is going to be the larger unit. Now, each of those equalities that we just talked about can be written in something that we call a conversion factor. And a conversion factor just simply takes, takes an equality and makes it into a fraction. So if I'm looking at these equalities here on the screen, if I say one pound is equal to 16 ounces, then my conversion factor is one pound per 16 ounces, or 16 ounces per one pound. And this here is our conversion factors. Okay? And I can do the same thing with either of the others. Okay? And those are all conversion factors. So whenever you have an equality, you can use that as a conversion. And those conversion factors can be used in your calculations. Number one, going from one unit to the next, let's say a metric unit to a metric unit or a metric to an English unit, or even simply trying to figure out a problem and you need to convert um, from one thing to the next. So in chemistry, we're going to be using a lot of conversion factors and simply remember that a and equality can become a, a conversion factor. So here we go. If we say that 60 minutes is equal to one hour, then I can put 60 minutes in the numerator and an hour in the denominator and 60 minutes in the denominator. Okay? 
and same for this metric equality, right? So let's do this problem. If we remember from a few slides ago, we said that um, one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters, right? Remember from your ruler? So if I want to know how many millimeters are in 100 centimeters, then if I start with what, I, with what I've been given, and then I multiply using my conversion factor, because this can become Right? So I can now cancel things out. If I put centimeters on the bottom and millimeters on the top, I end up with millimeters in my answer because these are going to cancel out and I get 1,000 millimeters. Okay? So notice how we placed millimeters on top so that we can get millimeters in our answer. Notice that these are interchangeable. You can use either one depending on what your problem is asking you for. Now, there's one thing to remember about conversion factors and significant figures. Conversion factors between metric units are definitions. And because they're definition, that means that they're exact. And so you don't consider them in your calculation of how many sig figs you have. Okay. So, but the difference is if we're going from metric to English now, those are measurements and you have to consider the number of significant figures in those measurements when you're doing your calculations. The only one that is an exception to this rule is centimeters to inches and those, that is an exact number. So 2.54 centimeters equals to one inch, that's exact and you don't consider that in your significant figures, okay? So when you're working your calculations, if it's going from metric to English, um, you're going to consider the number of sig figs. And this becomes important. So if I look here, um, one meter is 39.4 inches. Well, 39.4 has how many sig figs? Right, three. So there's three. there should be, if there are no fewer sig figs in your problem, then you should have three sig figs, OK? So these, I will give you these on exams, but you should know your metric conversions. Um, even if you have to go from, so let's say um, sometimes you have to go, let's say from micrograms to, I don't know, kilograms, right? So the rule that you use is you're gonna go from prefix unit a non-prefix unit to your um, prefix unit. And in that case, that would be microgram to grams to kilograms. And in each of these positions, you would utilize your conversion factors. So let's say you don't know offhand how many you go from, from micro to kilo. So if you say micrograms is 10 to the minus 6, and that's 10 to the minus 3, I mean, I'm sorry, that's 10 to the 3, then it should be 10 to the 9 micrograms per 1 kilogram, right? You can do it that way, or you can do it step by step. So because this is 10 to the minus 6, and this is 10 to the 3, from there to there, there are 9 units. So we say that one, 10 to the 9 micrograms is going to equal 1 kilogram. So you can figure it out that way. Or you can do it this way. It just depends on what's more comfortable for you. So let's practice with these conversion factors. I guess I should have left that problem for later after we did the practice. It's okay. So we want to practice going from liters to milliliters. And the question says, write conversion factors from each equality. So one liter, milliliters, so we can say one liter, 1,000 milliliters, 
1,000 milliliter to one liter. We have another equality where we can say um, 10 to the 3 liters, I'm sorry, 10 to the minus 3 liters is equal to 1 milliliters. Now remember, 1,000 is 10 to the 3, so they're interchangeable. You can use either one. So for these conversion factors, we can say 10 to the minus 3 liters over 1 mil is equal to 1 mil over 10 to the minus 3 liters. <clears throat> or we can say 0.001, or we can say 1 over 1,000. Okay, B, we have meters and inches. Well, if you go back to your chart, it says that one meter is 39.4 inches. So we can say one meters over 39.4 or 39.4 over one meter. C. Um, we want to go from meters to kilometers. So we say that one meter is equal to 10 to the minus 3 kilometers. Or I can say um, one kilometer is equal to 10 to the 3 meters. And then we can do this.